we always look back at drafts and we say, well, how did that guy slip? How'd that guy take get taken so late? Why didn't anybody take him sooner? Boy, did teams look dumb for not taking him. So we're talking about defensive defensemen. And they're going to go probably around the middle of the draft. Some players are going to end up being below them that could end up being steals. So left winger, Radion Amirov. And I listened to the, the way to pronounce that, Radion Amirov. Uh, so... Six foot tall, 168 pounds. 168 pounds really stands out, doesn't it? It seems slight. And yet, there's this Pedersen kid in Vancouver who uh, we talked a lot, myself included, about how he seemed a bit slight and probably needed to bulk up for the NHL. Didn't end up being a major issue. Now, Amirov is an interesting one because... I think he's going to be underrated going into these these uh, these proceedings once we finally have a draft in likely October. His strengths, teamwork, speed, shooting accuracy, puck handling, agility, and acceleration. He's a good shooter. He's got a good shot. And he's a good, skilled two-way winger. He's capable at both ends of the ice. The only reason you're not seeing him higher up is certain mental aspects of the game that he has to work on and the fact he's 168 pounds he definitely needs to bulk up if this kid's going to play in the nhl he needs to get there the thing is the skill is already there the skill already shows he's ready to go and he's really tough one-on-one -on -one. so if it's a one-on-one -on -one battle between him and a defender good luck to the defender they're going to need it uh great fast hands uh shifty uh good along the boards and he thinks the game pretty well now, the drawbacks that are causing him to be later on in the draft. I'm going to say first off, with the shortened season, there's likely less opportunities that scouts had to see him than they might have had if the season had gone the whole way through. So, I get the feeling there's probably been a lot of eyeballs on him, not as many as there might have been if we'd gone all the way through, if there hadn't been a stoppage. So, again, he may end up being a steal later. One thing that I was reading that he does need to work on is, so as he's coming into the offensive zone, you know how some players, they'll stop and they'll wait for their, their teammates to come in or they'll barrel towards the net when they got nobody with them and you're going, what are you doing? You're one on four. It sounds like Amirov, that's one thing he needs to work on is figuring out when to speed the game up and when to slow it down. Kids can be taught how to fix that. So... Anything that he's got as a shortcoming that I saw is fixable. With the right development system, absolutely fixable. The talent's already there. He's six feet tall. He's just got to add some weight. This kid can play. And he's a solid left winger. He looks like he's going to be a good goal scorer should he make it to the NHL. And again, he can play at both ends of the ace. He's a 200-foot player. He's number 23 on hockey prospects list, number 16 on ISS hockey, number 5 on central scouting among European skaters, number 17 on elite prospects, and number 19 on Bob McKenzie's list. So again, they're all over. So I'm wearing Carolina because I think if Carolina, using whichever draft pick they use in that first round, um, if they want to pick a guy who's maybe a little bit off the radar, who might end up being a steal, this could be the guy. Last year, playing for Ufa's um, junior team, 31 games played, 13 goals, 13 assists, 26 points. This year, playing for Ufa's junior team, 17 goals or 17 games, 10 goals, 12 assists, 22 points. Of course, that's your KHL minor leagues. And at the KHL level, he played 21 games and he had two assists. And his numbers are kind of ugly, but he wasn't getting the kind of minutes that you want this kid to get. So. There's And there's always that, that aspect, too, where some kids just don't translate their game very well against men right out of the gate. So I would think the two points in the KHL tells you he probably is going to be a guy who needs a year or two to get ready for the NHL. I'm going to go ahead and say two. Does two sound good? I think two sounds good. So I'll say two years. Now, season being cut short didn't help him. So as he was coming along and getting his, his development going, season gets cut short. And I've talked about that as well, is that next year, uh, if we if we don't see a, a full, robust minor league and a junior development system, this is going to negatively impact a lot of players in the next draft class and the one after that. Uh, skilled, not afraid to go to the net. 
So he's a skilled player. He does go to the net. He's not afraid to get to the dirty areas. The problem is, again, it's the slight build, and it's it's knowing when to speed up and when to slow down the game. But offensively, it's there. And the shooting accuracy is there. So he's got the shot, he's got the talent, and he's definitely got the speed. It's a matter of just those those little little items that need to be fixed. But keep in mind, this is supposed to be a very deep draft. And this is the kind of guy that we come back to four or five years down the road and we say, wow, that was a steal. Can you believe Carolina? Can you believe the Rangers? Can you believe whoever ends up getting this draft pick? Can you believe that they picked him up and they got him where they did, whether it's 19th, 20th, 21st, wherever he ends up being taken. This one to me sounds like he could end up being a steal. But that's the question I have for you guys. So he feels like a boomer bust type, where either he comes into the NHL and he's great, or he never reaches the NHL, stays in the KHL for his career, something along those lines, or it just doesn't work out. Feels like it's going to be one or the other, that he's great, or it just doesn't work out. There, there doesn't, it doesn't feel like he'll be a bottom six guy who plays, you know, here and there. And no, it, it feels like it'll be a boomer bust situation. So which side are you on with this one? Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And hey, uh, thanks to those who who have uh, subscribed to the channel over the last couple of days. It's been an amazing couple of days of growth. And I did enable the, the the membership option on the channel. We'll see how that goes. It feels weird. I don't know. It just, it does. It feels weird. So I enabled that yesterday and we'll, we'll see where that goes and how that goes. But hey, thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.